Well, it's, it's time. <laughs> I've been putting this off for quite some time. Oh, by the way, welcome to the Voodoo Garden. My name is Ray. I am the host of the Voodoo Garden. Uh, it is time. I've been putting this off for quite a long time. This is my Zabrina banana, or otherwise known as blood banana. And they're known as blood bananas because they have red blotches. And that's kind of a creepy name. You think they could have thought of a better name. But um, I grew this banana from a little, little bitty wisp of a slip that I purchased online many, many years ago. And uh, it grew really well. And uh, by the way, it's hard to see you over here. But uh, the place where I used to live had a higher ceiling. So I could grow this as tall as I wanted. Well, I don't live in that place anymore. I live in a, a place with a little teeny tiny voodoo garden, a voodoo garden et, as it were. And this tree, this banana tree, is outgrowing the voodoo garden. It's, it's a beautiful plant, I must admit, but uh, it's starting to shade other plants. It's, trying, it's starting to push other plants out of the way. And it's getting a little bit out of control. I have a couple options open to me here. I can't grow it outside. It's not an outdoor tree at all. So that one's that option's closed off. One option I've a, I've exercised before. I could cut this back to ground level, and you can do that with a banana tree. Don't worry about it at all. If you're growing one indoors or even outdoors in a pot, take a sharp, sharp, sharp knife and hold it steady and slice it about maybe two inches above ground level. Just slice it off. Compost the banana tree, and what you'll notice after a while, maybe a couple weeks or so, is the very center of that stump is going to put out this little tube thing in the middle. It's going to get a little bit of moldy looking stuff on the top. Don't worry about that. But uh, this tube is going to start growing out. And what will happen is it'll push out even more and, and more, and then after a matter of a month or two, that will form a leaf. Then another leaf, then another leaf. Then you're on your way to having the same problem that you had before. And I've done that, I think, one or, one or two times with this tree. I've cut it back. So now I'm trying to figure out what to do. Do I, do I get rid of it? Do I give it away? Do I sell it? Do I eat it? And uh, another, uh, another thing that kind of threw itself into the mix is this banana tree has a baby. And a baby banana tree is known as a pup. That's what I call them. Some people call them slips. I don't know what, they, uh, what, it, what it's called, but I call it a pup because I like that name. Well, all that is is a baby banana tree that grows out of the base. What happens with bananas is underneath they'll form kind of like uh, some uh, uh, flowers that you, well, no, this isn't a flower, <laughs> but lilies and stuff like that will form uh, uh, corms and other kind of bulbous looking things and they form other plants outside. Well, that's what this thing does. So this one has a baby and I'm thinking, hmm, I could cut the mama down and try to kill it and let the baby grow out. Or I could cut the mother down and let the mother grow out. Or I could cut the mother down and remove the baby and grow the baby in a pot all of its own. And I thought, you know what? I've never done that before. That might be an interesting thing to do in the Voodoo Garden. So uh, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove this baby and I'm going to show you how I do it. So I hope I do it right. If I don't do it right, well, you got something to post about, don't you? <laughs> and I've been busy. I've been busy since the last episode. Remember, I did the cooking episode uh, with uh, the compost. Well, let me update you on that, okay? Uh, I have a little thing I want to try and I wanted to hold off doing this uh, until you were here because I want to, you know, I want us to do this together. So what I did was I have compost that I make outside and as soon as it's done composting I cover it up and then uh, next spring I use it in the garden. Well, I, I was trying to think of a way to use it in here as a fertilizer because I've been using various fertilizers and I've had mixed success with them. Well, I came up with this idea. Why not take the compost outside, bring it inside? Couldn't bring it inside because Compost is generally infected with insects and microbes and all kinds of weird stuff. Well, my solution to that was to boil it. So that's what I did. I showed you in the last episode. I put it in a, in a Dutch oven, put some water in there, boiled it off until I, I killed the microbes. And that basically takes it up to around 200 degrees. Kills off all of the bad stuff. Uh, insects, insects, eggs. Some people will say that it'll kill off all the beneficial microbes. Well, compost for me, this compost is not about generating beneficial microbes. The microbes are already in the soil, okay? And uh, I thought about this uh, before I filmed this episode. The microbes generally are in the compost and the soil, but I don't actually need them in the compost. What I'm using the compost for is nutrients for the soil, 
You see what I'm talking about? So the compost will feed the soil, which already has the microbes in it. Two different kinds of compost, folks. One of them is the brood kind that you see mostly, where they put compost, molasses, a few mints, I don't know, and then they use a bubbler and they bubble it up. That's to generate beneficial bacteria that you feed into your soil, as if you have soil that doesn't have bacteria in it. I never really quite understood the need for brood compost tea, because soil, just about any soil on the planet, has the microbes in it. All you have to do is nurture them and they're going to come to life and go crazy. So I don't see a need to make your own bacteria and then put it in there. That's not the type of tea that I make. What I do is I put compost in a container, add water, let it steep, basically sit overnight. It extracts the nutrients out of the compost. The, the, the bacteria in it is a side effect. I mean, it already has bacteria in it, but I'm taking out the nutrients feeding the soil which feeds the plants and that's what works so very well outside in my garden so I thought you know what why don't I do it in here so the the, the boiling of the compost really doesn't hurt it I mean it doesn't hurt my end uh, needs and also dehydrating it doesn't hurt the end needs because uh, the compost can stay dry forever because it's the nutrients in it that are what I need so I thought you know what that's what I'll do. I dried the compost and then I took it one step further because I just can't stop myself. I really can't. I can't stop myself. I had an old food processor that somebody gave me way back, I think in 2004, and I, and I very rarely used it. So I thought, what can I do with this food processor? Then it dawned on me. I can make my, because I showed you the compost that was all, you know, it, was, it looked like granola. And I thought, you know what, I can, I can do better. So I, put the, I took the dried uh, compost, put it in my food processor, and turned it on. <laughs> and boy, was it dusty. So I hurried up and rushed outside, and I did it on the picnic table. And I ran an extension cord, and I turned it into dust. Yes, I did. I turned it into dust, and I stored some of it in this Ziploc baggie. Not so much to keep it fresh, but when you open it up, it's like this genie that comes out, this dust just goes, and it goes all over the place. It goes in my nose, and my mouth, and I don't need compost dust in my body. I need it in my plants. So uh, I'm thinking the fact that I ground it up into powder makes it more condensed and set, you know, the smaller you make something, the more compact it is. So now that this is dust, I can use even less to make my compost tea. So less goes farther. And uh, I'm getting to a point here because I want to do a demo. So I thought, you know what? Last time I mentioned you can use a small handful of compost to make a gallon of compost tea. And I thought, how can I make that even more condensed for myself and also more functional? Because when you put the compost in there, sometimes you have one of those little, let me show you. You have a Barbie, uh, I call this my Barbie watering can because I found it somewhere. And it was so handy, I kept it. And it has this little, little bitty nozzle on here. So if I put any kind of, uh, you know, if I mix compost with water and then I dunk this in it and get it in there, there might be chunks in here. And I've had that happen. And they clog this up. That's a pain in the butt. I don't want to blow into here and I don't have a little stick to stick in here. So I thought, you know what? Got to fix that problem. Powderizing it fixed the problem because now it dissolves in there and it, you know, the little floaties are so small they'll go through here. So I want to demonstrate this and then we're going to get to the banana tree, okay? Because I think this is a fascinating thing I'm doing with the compost. Come on over here and I'm going to do this live so that you can see what I'm doing and see how it works, okay? This is my compost that I make from chicken manure, leaves, grass, dandelions, clover, uh, straw, you name it. That's what goes into this compost. This is really, really good stuff. Now what I thought is, you know what, I can condense this down to using less than a quarter of a cup, because that's what I measured my uh, half a hand to be. I thought, you know what, I can get it down to a tablespoon, I think. So what I'm gonna do, now look at this, see how the dust comes up? This is some finely ground stuff, and I really like it like that. Okay, let's take one level table, oh, you think I could do this, because I cook. Okay, one level tablespoon, we're gonna dump it in there, and uh, before I filmed this, I actually went upstairs and I measured out with a measuring cup. Yes, I used one of my measuring cups. I measured out exactly 16 cups of tap water, and that's exactly one gallon. So I did that. Ugh, the dust coming out of here. Okay, now what we're going to do is just dump it in here. And you may be asking yourself, why is Ray doing this? Why is Ray showing me how he makes 
compost tea in, in the Voodoo Garden. And the reason that I'm, I'm showing you this is because this is what I'm going to start fertilizing with. And maybe I can encourage other people to give it a try too because one of the things that we have issues with with indoor gardening is how to feed our plants. Do we use uh, artificial fertilizers? It's hard to uh, get organic fertilizers that really work and don't stink. And the cool thing about this is it doesn't stink. It just smells like compost. So when I mix it up, it's practically instant compost tea. I'm going to let this set though. Even though it's, it's finely ground and uh, it should uh, mix literally instantly like Nestle uh, Quick or, uh, or Hershey's Cocoa or Bosco or whatever <laughs> you drink, hot cocoa mix, uh, even though it mixes almost instantly, I'm going to let it set until the end of the program and then we're going to see what it looks like when it comes out of the spigot, okay? All right, that's all I wanted to show you. Back up a little bit and let's start chopping this tree up. Now, from what I understand, a lot of people will slice down close to the mother plant and that's going to that's going to slice the baby off. And uh, I thought, you know what? I don't think I want to do that. I think what I'm going to do is just remove some of the soil and then I'm just going to pull it off by hand because I you know, I don't use tools any more often than I absolutely have to. So I thought, you know what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just dig down a little bit. This isn't going to hurt the mother at all. But this will get down to where the baby attaches to the mom. It'll give me a little bit of leverage space. And then I just pull to the left, down, and then pull up. Okay. Well, I totally screwed that up. You know what? I wish I would have done it differently. But what can you do? I don't always have successes. This is one of my failures. <laughs> I totally messed this up. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Ray screwed it up. I should have gone down a little bit deeper or I should have sliced. I watched a, a program by Bill Bevins, and Bill Bevins grows uh, tropicals, and he sliced with a knife, but he was just going at it, and I thought, you know what, I don't think I want to do that. So, but I should have followed Bill's advice and used the knife. Lesson learned, I will never do this again. You know, I, I, I have successes, I have failures, but I try to take my failures and try to find something that I can learn from that. And this one I learned, oh, I did learn. It smells really good though. <laughs> <laughs> and from what I understand, you can eat banana leaves, so maybe this isn't a total loss. Well, I won't be doing that again. Oh, sure, now he gets a knife. <laughs> okay, bear with me, okay? This is, a, this is a learning process. Now, I do need to remove this plant. I know this is going to be painful for some folks. You know, the last time I did this, I got so many people yelling at me, but I thought, what can I do? You know, I have to do what I have to do regardless of how people feel about it. So I know some of you are not going to like this, but this is just what I have to do to help my plants. This will not kill it. This will help it in the long run. It'll give it a longer life. What I'm going to do is remove this plant above soil level so that it'll have time to grow back and it'll also remove this big plant off the top so that it'll bring light to the other plants and it'll buy me some more time. All right, so here we go. What I do is I take this and go straight across. Take your sharpest knife, hold on to this with your hand, slice straight across, and gently lean it over to the left so your knife doesn't get stuck. Go all the way around it. You want a nice, clean cut. Whoa! Holy cow! And look at this, it's just dripping all kinds of moisture. And this will do this. This will put out moisture out of the top here for quite a while, pro probably a day or two, but don't worry about it. It will seal over and eventually, it'll look a little bit dead for a while, then it'll start growing, but you know what? Oh, this smells absolutely fresh. The sap that's coming out of here, it smells like pure, fresh banana. Hey, look at all the light. That is huge. <laughs> I 
You know, I, I, I wish now, you know, uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. I wish I would have done this during the summer, and that way I could have composted this. But all is not lost. From my understanding, uh, chickens can eat this. And I think I, I threw a banana leaf in there once. So I'm going to double check online just to make sure that I'm safe because I don't want to poison my animals. But I do believe uh, banana leaves are okay for the chickens. So what I'm going to do... <laughs> is scare the living daylights out of them with this and uh, after I check online to make sure it's edible I'm gonna take this inside the chicken coop and turn them loose because it's it's snowing out there we got like an inch or two worth of snow and everything's froze solid those chickens don't come out during the winter and it's hard to get them enough green stuff to eat so a lot of the clippings that are edible uh, like the spider plants and stuff I'll take those clippings and I'll take it out to the chickens. so it gives them a little bit of a treat I know it's not much but it's a little bit. And boy, this thing's just dripping like an ice cream cone on a hot day. <laughs> it smells like a banana split in here. I love it. Anyway, I'm going to set this aside and then we're going to check on our compost tea. Ah, and I wanted to show you something. All oh, the surprises never stop here in the Voodoo Garden. I'm going to get as close as I can without this getting all fuzzy and out of focus. But I'm hoping you'll be able to see this. Look right here at the tip of my finger, okay? I'm going to move in as close as I can and see if you can see it. See that? I do believe that is a flower coming out of my papaya. Yeah, my papaya is finally going to start flowering. That's exciting to me. I was so excited when I first saw this. I, I had to use a magnifying glass, but it's been growing every day. And then I'll go to this angle and you can't see it yet. You'll need a magnifying glass. But in here, there's a couple more coming out. So I do believe my papaya has gotten old enough and mature enough to start flowering. And uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is a male, female, a hermaphrodite. I have no way of knowing. All I know is that it's supposed to be a dwarf papaya. And with any luck, maybe I'll get pa uh, papaya fruit. That would be kind of neat, wouldn't it? A little papaya fruit in the voodoo garden. Well, it's been about maybe 15 to 20 minutes and here's our coffee, <laughs> our compost coffee or tea. I'm going to stir it up. I'm going to get my watering can and see what it looks like when it comes out. Hmm. It's not totally dark like chocolate, but I can see the darkness in the water. And that's going to be good enough for everyday watering. See, I don't, I don't use, uh, I don't want to use this just as periodic fertilizer. What I want to do is use this for everyday watering in the voodoo garden. That way, I don't give it a big shot of fertilizer and then leave it. Big shot of fertilizer and leave it. What I want to do is a slow feeding every time I water my plants. When I use compost tea outside, I'll use compost tea a couple times and then stop and then water the garden and let it set because I don't use compost tea constantly. In here, in this container, I can keep this full of compost tea and then any time I water my plants, it's a very mild tea that's going to feed my plants gently every time I water it. And all it takes is a uh, tablespoon per gallon. That's actually not bad at all. <laughs> compost tea out of a faucet. How cool is that? Modern gardening with Ray in the Voodoo Garden. Well, I was waiting to make this uh, compost tea until you arrived, but I, I really did need to water this uh, passion fruit plant because it was getting a little bit too thirsty for my taste, but I had to wait until I filmed. I also got to do this uh, uh, arrowhead. This arrowhead was falling down. Remember, it was all falling down and looking kind of ratty. I want to show you something. Now, uh, since the last episode, I've been watering with nothing but this compost tea. Just recently, I powderized it. But before that, I was using the crumbles and I was using compost tea. But so everything in here is surviving off of nothing but compost tea water. And I wanted to give you a quick update on this because this guy really has perked up <laughs> quite a bit. Look at that. That was just an itty bitty baby when I brought it into the voodoo garden. And he or she or it is having quite the time of its life. <laughs> oh, it's a beauty, but boy, is it a thirsty plant. Son of a gun. I got to water this thing every few days because I think it's getting a little bit rootbound. But you know what? 
as long as I keep giving it the tea, I think it's going to do just fine. And you know what? I think it's time to clip back this chef layer. It's getting a little bit large as well. Huh, son of a gun. Ah, it's a good day. Two inches of snow outside, nice and warm and toasty in here. <sighs> it's a pretty good day in here, isn't it? Anyway, it was just a short episode because I wanted to show you the banana. Now, don't worry about the banana. What I'm going to do is put it on a pot uh, underneath it and bring it closer to the light. So now it's going to be even healthier than before. It's going to be closer to the light. It's going to grow the new leaves. And it's going to give all of these guys a little bit of a chance because it was a, it was a bit of a hog when it comes to space. And I want to make sure that all of these plants have uh, equal time underneath the light. This poor guy was kind of shaded. Look at this. This is a sago palm. Someone sent me a seed for that. And it just had one leaf for a while. And it's been growing phenomenally well. See that? Ancient looking dinosaur plant. Something's making a sound in here. I think it might be a mouse. Gosh, I hope it's not a mouse. I don't, please don't be a mouse. Anyway, I gotta get going. I got a mess to clean up here. Thanks for joining me. Until next time, this is Ray. We are out of here. Okay, everybody. Okay. Barbie can, lid. You know, I need a maid in here. Seriously. I love being in here, but cleaning up is a pain. <laughs>